a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you know. But this is probably what got everything handled. It's probably you had no a third, a third party that people aren't aren't aware of and aren't really talking about, which is how you hide in plain sight. But Vin Diesel put a picture on Instagram. He said, and his caption his caption was, "I need Brittany Griner home by Christmas." All I'm saying is it happened like two weeks later. All I'm saying is Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel said, "I need no role." How do how do you know? I know. How do you how do you know? I just know. He said the man put it on Instagram, so you know it's real. He said, "I need Brittany home by Christmas." Biden did it. With two weeks to spare. But no. Listen. Anyway. Listen. No. You're not, you're not about to just slide. I'm you're not this. about to slide by this look. I'm not. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel had nothing to do with this. All respect with Vin, for Vin no, no, Diesel. No, wait, wait. Vin Diesel. No. No. Took him and his, him and his clique, him and his family. No. Went over there with some chargers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Some flying Dodge chargers. And they got Vlad Shuck. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to fall back. I'm going to let y'all have Brittany. But I need Merchant. Not doing this. Vin was probably at the handoff. Not doing this. He probably was probably there. He was probably on the tarmac somewhere. Hi. Hello. Hey. Citizens of the world. And welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by, I'm going to make a scowling face, David. You don't like it? Don't ever do that again. Citizens of the world? Never in your life. Why? Just don't. It's my intro. Maybe it shouldn't be. I mean, you don't even close us out anymore, so you can't. I skipped closing us out. Twice. Two times. Relax. That's anymore. It's a trend. Anyway. Hi, everybody. We're here. Team Rushed Vibes. Plus. Popster. Our elf on a shelf. Who got his name because when the children found him, they were eating a Pop-Tart. And Is that how we got his name? Mm-hmm. I thought it was something a little more. No, creative. They were gonna do Poppy, and I, I felt like Poppy was more for a female elf. Um, so or, uh, Latin, huh? Or a Latin elf, Poppy? No, that no, was Poppy. Poppy. It was gonna be Poppy. Oh, sorry. So I steered them to Popster, um, and here he is. I was looking everywhere for him, and Dave had. She was like, David, where is he? Where is he? She was sitting right here where she is. Cameras on, monitors on. David, where is is my elf? So I'm just sitting here. He was standing first. I'm standing there where the camera is, and I'm just looking at her like Jessica. So I think at some point she realized that the elf was in the room. And then she turned to her left, and then. There my boy Popster. My eye is acting up, so I blame it on that. It's been watering all day. Kind of feels a little dry. Not, I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, bottom lid was a little swollen. So I'm hoping it's not like a sty or one of those things. But um, I've been blaming my vision issues on that. Anyway, how you hanging? Good. Hopefully we can get through this recording without children. Child. Yeah. We'll see. I'm not confident. Um, I trust <laughs> none of our children. Not a one of them. But Episode two, rocking my Crocs. And the high socks. And the high socks. Church socks. Classy. Shout out to uh, Bethany. World's greatest hater. Along with you. <laughs> Team hateration in the business. Mm. Jess and B. Yeah, whatever. It's been a busy week. Has it? It feels like it. What's been going on? It's because it's just Monday. <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying a, a recording, an episode drop week, mm. as opposed to <clears throat> a traditional week. Sure. I base it episode to episode. What's so, happening? A lot. Like? 
You just want to jump into it? You done talking about yourself? Oh, I thought you meant like for us personally. No, we ain't done nothing. <clears throat> I mean, we went to Mistletoe Market. We, we did. That was pretty cool. That was us being active out in these streets. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. You know what? Um, you know what I did randomly the other night? I, uh, I had some time. Mm. And I was up. <clears throat> so I Googled. So every once in a while, I'll Google like old teachers and staff mm. from school when I was growing up just to see if they're like still alive. <laughs> One, because old age, right? Just, mm-hmm. you know, people die. There are teachers I refuse to look up because I, th- I know they're dead. People die every day, B. Uh, but also COVID. What? <laughs> so like people are already old. And then you add in COVID, it's like their chances of not being alive. It's Can I interject something I heard? Are you sure. talking about old people in COVID? Apparently, there is a shortage of Christmas performers because of COVID. Like a thousand of them died due to COVID, and they're they're actually called Christmas performers. Okay, that's kind of grim. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, dude was like, because typically we're older and heavier. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so that's your way of setting yourself up to say that they're fat. Yeah. And yeah. old. So you're fat susceptible to COVID. Carry so, on. Santa better watch out. Um, it was a Santa who said that. I'm talking about the real Santa. <laughs> oh, is he immune? No. So I was looking up my JV basketball coach, freshman year in high school, who was a police officer in i don't think it was the county that the school was in but he uh or maybe it was i don't know i don't know how the police jurisdiction laws work or whatever but he was a police officer he's dead he's still alive he's arrested he's no he's i think he's retired but i think he's still working in law enforcement or security in some capacity but he has a son who has two sons one uh i think recently graduated and then another one is actually like coming up and like playing basketball and stuff so he's still involved with with the game so it was kind of cool to see he's much grayer i would ex- expect yeah. that but did you connect passion. or you just like no nah, i just stalked him stalked excuse me stalked him i might connect. i don't know that he would remember me it's been if you gotta yeah that I don't, maybe uh no maybe um i'm 35 now so 20 21 22 years So it's been a minute, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's so funny because I was heavily (laughs) recruited. Let me, let me wind it back. I was not heavily, I was about to say heavily recruited, but I was going to say a tongue in cheek. Um, My eighth grade year in middle school, Mm -hmm. our team was really talented, but we were trash. Like we just, we just played horribly. Like nobody really knows why, but um, our last, either our last game or our second to last game, there were a couple of local high school coaches. Uh, One is like an actual like legend uh, who ended up. A legend like according to your county. Well, yeah, but uh, coincidentally ended up moving down to Charlotte and was coach at Butler high school for a while. Um, No, not Butler. Yeah. Butler. Cause Butler pointing at me. Like I have no Butler was a new school, right? At one point school was a new school. No, but like when we were in high school, but there was a new school. We weren't in high school at the same time. I'm younger than you. Lord have mercy. At some point when you were in high school or, or around around there. I was in the North was, Carolina high school system for one year. I don't okay. know. I think Butler was a new high school. I think Philip Berry was the new school when I was. I think Butler was a new school at some point. Proud. So he, he came and took that job. But anyways, he was at the game oh, you're with at me like another, uh, another coach. So I played really well that game. We still lost. So uh, I was supposed to go to Garfield, which is a school both my brothers went to and my sister mm-hmm. in, in love. Uh, but all my friends were going to. Oh, I was like, who? <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> so all my friends went to the school in Manassas called Osborne Park. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to go to school with my friends. Of course. So I applied for the science program, got in. So I, I would no interest in science. <laughs> like, absolutely. I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to get mm-hmm. in. I get it. So I, I, apply, it. I, I applied. I applied. Got in. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a big thing. That was that was a big deal for me. 
can't remember one science class I took no <laughs> or ever. what effect it had on me. But anyways, I got in and I would go to the open gyms and stuff. And, you know, people saw that I could hoop a little bit. So I came in with some height, a little bit of height, not a lot of height, but a little bit of height and um, started a point guard. Right. Um, got benched halfway through the first game and, and lost my starting spot the second game for my uh, for my, my homeboy who actually went to middle school with me. And um, yeah, <laughs> so my my flame it, it went out. But anyways, so uh, the reason why I, I remember him and will always be fond of him is because when I when we moved down to North Carolina, I okay. went. Mom and I went back at some point. I can't remember when. And I connected with, I guess, one of the PE teachers who I was cool with before I left. And I said, hey. I want to come back. I want to come back and say hello. But it was always kind of weird because with the visitation rules, because I was in high school, mm -hmm. but not that high school. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they would actually let me visit because they would think I was just a student, mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to class. So I thought I didn't want to get anything in trouble. So basically me and this teacher, we concocted a plan where she snuck me into the school. So, and I was just going to play like I was a student. <laughs> I just wouldn't go. I would just hang out with her all day long. And then in between, um, periods, I would just go and visit among the friends. So word got out, of course, because word always gets out. Word always leaks. People were leaking even back in the early, what was this, 2000s? And I walk in and like I turn a corner and Coach Tillman's there, the, the, the cop. And I'm like, so Coach, he was like, yeah, I heard you were coming back. So I think I'm busted, right? Like it's a, it's a law enforcement officer. Like he's about to, about to put me in the handcuffs. He's about to see me out. But he kept the hush hush. So we, he took me back to the office and we caught up. And um, he you told can, him how you got benched. No, nah, I didn't. No, I got he. He's the one he who benched, benched me. You. Yeah, oh. he's the one who benched me. <clears throat> um, so we we talked about ball and stuff, and he was asking about you know what it was like down here in comparison. And then he did you talk him into moving to North Carolina? No, he still lives. He still lives up there. So who lives here? Coach Coach Robinson, one of the other local high school coaches, moved down here. So confused. yeah, because you weren't listening. So I am listening, but you're talking about so many so many pieces. I am. I'm just in my in my childhood. Your memory lane excitement is just yeah. So I infiltrated a high school and didn't get caught. So I feel like based on what some this kind of relates to what we're going to talk about later, that I feel like I could be a spy. No. Because I infiltrated a whole high school and yeah. nobody found out. Well, I mean, some people found out, but nobody, nobody who would have done if anything about it. If you truly infiltrated, nobody would have found out. Well, the point was, the purpose was to go see my friends. Okay. So people would have found out. All right. But yeah, I think I almost got caught a couple of times, but uh, it was cool. It was, it was a good day. So I, I just happened, cause I'll always be fond of him because he, he could have dined me out. But, you know, he looked out. So I'll just randomly look up people on Facebook. And sometimes I can't find them. So I'm like, mm. yeah. Um, and then I always get surprised. So. I'm glad you were able to locate him. Me too. I'll, pro I'll probably hit him up. But like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, I remember the actual varsity coach. I looked him up to right afterward. And he's still, he's still around. But it's so weird because in all of his pictures, he's like this big, because he's like 6'2", six 6'3", six heavy set black dude. Um, he was an authoritarian, like straight up. Like we we would run laps, like for the smallest, my track for the smallest thing. And he, he led with fear, but the fear of God in you. But I see all his Facebook pictures and he's just like oh, big this big bear. soft teddy bear with like all these running white kids. I'm like, why you would never like that with us? Because we weren't white. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Nah, Coach Lover was cool. But it's so weird as a grown man now, probably around the age he was when he was coaching, maybe a few years younger. Um, just to kind of see how he's how he's aged. But he was cool the last the I think like the week before we actually moved down here, he drove me home from uh, from school of practice. So and he was listening to uh Keith Sweat. Telling me I know nothing about it. I was like, you're absolutely right. You bet not. Two men in the car. <laughs> in a key sweat talk about, I don't know nothing about it. You damn, damn right. Don't want to know nothing about it. 
Shoot, put on some Nelly or something. Keep sweating. That's the only, the only thing I've hold against them. Um, speaking of stories, I'm sorry. This is the last one, then we'll get into it. I'll cut this if you want me to. So we went to camp. Have I, have I not told you the story? We went to camp up in Virginia. And uh, it was a, it was weird basketball camp because it was like outdoor and indoor. And you know me, I don't really like playing on concrete. Even as a teenager, I'm thinking like, okay, like if I play on concrete, it's probably going to have a negative effect on me later in life. Neither here nor there. So we're playing and uh, we were playing this, this whack team. Like they was just really whack. Like I think they were younger and they weren't really good, but they played together. They played cohesively. And they ran plays and stuff. Uh, so it was a tight game. <clears throat> and uh, I remember he had called a timeout. And even though it was camp, supposed to be about development, right? Uh, he was like, y'all better not lose this game. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, of course, we ended up losing. And uh, we go back to the bench. And he's just like, you know, we were kind of talking. We were like, oh, no, no, no. He was like, stop. He was like, everybody stop. And he's like, look over there. And he had us look at the other team's bench. And you thought they just won, like, the state championship or whatever. A coach was congratulating everybody, and everybody was hype and everything. And so, I can't, it was on a, it was, it was a local college campus. Uh, I can't remember where it was. But we had dorms that we were staying in because it was summertime. Mm-hmm. Some of the students were there. So, we were probably across campus. But it is a, is a drivable campus. So, Coach Larre said... He has he had a little BMW, little beat up BMW. I don't know what year it was. It was a sedan. He said, "I'm gonna go get in my car." He's like, I'm, by, "I'm driving back to the dorm." He said, "I bet not beat y'all there." <laughs> and so we were like, "Nah, he's playing right." <laughs> dude got in his car, and he didn't do the, like the campus speed limit. He was like in forty. <laughs> and so we were like, "Cut!" So we take off running, and of course, there's a bunch of other games going on, and like other other people are watching us. And all I remember hearing as I'm sprinting across the campus, like like my life depending on it, somebody was like, oh, they got to beat him back to the door. They got to beat him back to the door. I hope every other coach did the same thing after that. We made it. We beat him. I'm glad. Yeah, me too. Could have been tragic. It's cruel and unusual punishment, man. It was hot. It was already hot. Look, coaches are. Played a whole game and then you don't make us run. Run across campus. Coaches can be horrible. Was it at least a flat campus? Um, I don't. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't crazy. But yeah, so that's my that's my trip down memory lane. I haven't given like a good story in a while. I don't know that that was good, but it felt good to, to relive it. So I'm glad you got that opportunity. No problem. So carried away. What you got? You just you. <laughs> so uh, a lot has happened. You're leading. We got a few things to get into tonight, um, but we figured we'd start with the news, the news of the weekend, right? Or the week, end, end of the week, beginning of the weekend, that um, Brittany Griner's home. Brittany Griner is home-ish. So uh, I feel like this happened, what, Thursday, Friday? Let me see. I was texting the mom. Yeah. Um, but was... Uh, was swapped for the uh, Merchant of Death. Can, okay, so apparently Russians think that we're crazy for calling him that. Yeah. Like, that's not how they refer to him. Yeah, because we probably, we probably who, hyped him up. He's just a dude who sold so weapons. Sold weapons. Like, there are plenty of those in yeah. America. So. Now, apparently, he, there's a history where he sold, like, arms to some faction that ended up killing a lot of um, Africans or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah, so apparently Africans should be upset. I... The African circles. You ain't no real, African. The circles See? that I'm running in. So look, no one Jessica, has said so look, anything. Jessica, no, Ghana wait, wait, wait. is a peaceful wait, 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 country. Wait, wait, Ghana doesn't do that. Thirty stuff. second time out. So Jessica does this thing where she is either conveniently <laughs> African or she is conveniently said, first generation American. So all like, I was trying to say. So like, is, so like the World Cup, right? So when the World Cup was on, obviously we were. It's, 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 a, it's a African household. So we were rooting for Ghana, of course. Don't steal my term. This is an African household. So we were rooting for Ghana, of course. And so Your kids were going hard so for Ghana. She, on Twitter, she's like, oh, Ghana, 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 this, Ghana, this, Ghana, that, Ghana, that, Ghana, that, Ghana. So now if some Africans is wilding or Africans is tripping, just like, I don't know why these Africans. Oh, I would call them Africans. <laughs> why are these quick. Africans are acting like this? Thank goodness I'm from the Bronx. Like, 
It's so interesting all when you're. Say, it's so interesting when you're at, when you're full bred African, African and when you're first generation American. In, don't deal with weapons. They're not what arms African circles? dealers. What no, circles you run in? Ghanaian circles, and we're not arms no Ghanaian, dealers. Yeah, no Ghanaian circles. So this is probably just a different part of Africa that you know. There's yeah. always having like internal wars, coups, and all of that. Ghana, Ghana is a peaceful but country. It doesn't surprise me that as Americans we would hype some some cat up. Yeah, because we just since like cousin Mark would say sensationalist anyway um, <laughs> what, what is your beef with that i don't it's just <laughs> what is your beef with sensationalism because i think some things are accurate and you just put you just say hey, well he's not saying the the subject matter he's talking more about the media they kind of stoked the the fire no kind of, I, I disagree um but i i wouldn't bother having that argument um why not because <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing this. You're not gonna argue with Mark. Uh, you don't want to argue with Mark. Ghana is. A, oh, you gonna ignore me? Ghana oh, okay. is a peaceful country. It's ranked as a top peaceful country in Africa. So I don't. That's fortunate, and I'm thankful that Ghana is that way. Um, but you know, you have coups taking place in that have taken place. You know, in Kenya and Sudan, uh, Congo, Cameroon. Um, a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot. Boko Haram just in Nigeria so I mean there are a lot of African nations that are unfortunately still kind of I feel like one of your kids is up uh, struggling with themselves but um, so that's why I said I don't know it's just not something that I'm I'm privy to and not that if I knew arms dealers I would speak that out on the pod yeah. um, but <laughs> I do. I have heard that, you know, a lot of African nations should be upset, but I haven't seen like, at least on African Twitter, that the portion that I'm in where they've been like, oh, we're in, we're in uproar about it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we call him the merchant of death and Russia. He's just, just dude. He's Apparently just, he volunteered to go back to, uh, to go help out in Ukraine. <laughs> oh, he's ready to go to war. He it's, said, it's, it's a quote I saw who knows if it was taken out of context and i was like hey bro you you ready you've been he in jail might. and you ready to just go straight back i've heard he's just kind of like a sympathy guy it like if that like, were me unless sonoma has gotten out of her crib um everybody's telling me the two yeah the two okay it must be somebody closing i can never tell if it's somebody slamming the door or if it's footsteps yeah i hope it's not sonoma's footsteps i'd be concerned um, she's been swinging that leg yeah that's she's been trying to swing that's, that leg the thriller walk um yeah apparently they we call him merchant of death but he's just like a dude who pretty much came up like he was poor like a poor russian guy and then got into selling weapons um and then just you know got international with it i'm not condoning it this is this is but this is me just saying perspective is very big because like we call the war vietnam but in vietnam they call it the american war so it's like when you only ever hear things from the american perspective of things it's more extreme and then you hear from you know the other side like it made me think we call it the war in afghanistan i'm sure they call it you know the american war the war against america whatever so you know he's just a, a guy who has sympathy like i had read that there was an article when his mother-in-law was sick and like died and they were saying like she died without getting to see him one more time like that was that's how they talk about him like he's just like this sad guy who was selling weapons and people die every day B they do and don't get to see their merchant of death son-in-law <laughs> so the uh obviously this created a bit of a firestorm what the merchant of death well the whole thing that Brittany was that they were essentially swapped for so I've been watching movies right not like recently but throughout my lifetime and occasionally you'll catch a movie or a tv show mm -hmm. where it's like a prisoner swap and so you know how you can never really, once you get old enough, you realize that things on TV are sensationalized, sensationalized, <laughs> um, and they don't quite take place in real life, or they don't. Things don't normally happen. Procedural certain things, certain procedural things don't exactly happen as they're portrayed on TV for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. You know, um, integrity and um, can't give away exactly how certain things happen just for the sake of criminals and whatnot. But I'll be damned. There were two they planes. Did, they did the walk by. They did the walk. <laughs> they did the exchange. I was like, oh my God, this is how it happens. How it hap I mean, movies are based off of reality. I get it, but you, you never really know because you're not, I haven't been fortunate enough 
to be a part of a a prisoner (laughs) exchange between between nations so uh, or between countries so i'm just like I'm like I'm sitting there watching the tape, and they have the little the little angle over the shoulder from Didn't from, he from behind. Like wave or something too. He did like oh, a, he gave somebody pound. He did. Yeah, I was like, okay. You know, he had a good home cooked meal waiting for him. Whew. Um, like what pierogies or something? <laughs> pierogi. What? Pierogi. What's pierogi? That's how you say it. What are don't, pir- dis- don't disrespect the no, Russian literally Russian called food. Pierogies. No pierogi. What do you know about what do you <laughs> What do I know about pierogi? What, what do why don't you know about it? How because about that? Because they're called pierogies. How do you know we're talking about the same thing? We're well, probably not. So exactly. why are you correcting me? I thought you I thought you had butchered pierogi. What is pierogi? It's a fine Russian dish. What do you know about Russian dishes? You see, exactly. I told you I could be a spy cuz I know about my pierogi. <laughs> you could not be a spy in Russia. How could I not be because a spy? Because if your black ass <laughs> landed in Russia, everybody would know. Nah. I'm hiding, I'm behind in plain there sight. Is that John, is that John David there Washington? There's nothing discreet about you. Behind in Certain plain. countries, you cannot be a spy. I'm behind in plain Russia sight. Russia is one of those countries. Um, no, nah, I got that from uh, what's the what's the Denzel movie? Equalizer. He, you remembered it? Of course, it's a Denzel movie. Of course, I remember it. You you know the whole movie? I, me and Alan. Reference that movie very frequently in our text messages with one another. I'm so glad I don't have to see y'all's text messages. So yeah, he I mean, probably, I, can start, I, can start showing I don't want to be you know. privy to that. So yeah, he, he probably went home to a great meal. Um, Brittany but, Griner, on the other hand, mm-hmm. came home to uh, her release being heavily politicized. Absolutely. Um, there were people who found out that uh, she, not only was she brought home, Mm. before other Americans, one notable American, uh, she was brought home in a swap for a criminal called the Merchant of Death. So this sent people up in arms off. We left a Marine over there. We left someone who served this country over there. And we brought home a basketball player. And you know what I love? What do you love, David? I love how uh, the press secretary was like, nah, you brought home an American. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? They are. What are we, what are we doing? I, I cannot get over this country and the peop- some of the people of this country and how, you know, you want people to be patriotic and bow before the flag or whatever symbolism towards the flag. And, you know, it's so great to be an American and proud about, but bow before the flag, huh? They want to buy the bow before the flag. I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing in their just secret respect, meetings. You just respect it. You put your hand over your heart anyway. But it's like, the problem with America is America is always going to be divided. Like this should be something unifying regardless of, whatever creed she falls under but that's just not how this country is built this country is is always going to find issue with everything yeah and it's really freaking annoying freaking freaking i almost said like the real word but i'm gonna leave it at freaking because living on the edge here one thing i think we keep forgetting is i won't discredit the fact that she did commit a crime on Russia's standards. I mean, on Russia's standards. I mean, yeah. On this is someone else's country. I mean, I get on it. On Russia's standards, she it. did commit a crime. I get it. But the I think even on the standards of the crime, it's recognized that her crime compared to others probably wasn't as extreme. True. So one, people are like, it wasn't a fair trade. It, it it's a fair trade because it's a life for a life. True. Um, Russia was never going to give us a fair trade. This is Russia. Like Russia is never going to give us a fair anything. They're they're literally attacking their neighbor. There's their fairness doesn't exist with the Kremlin. Um, so there's that. And when it comes to people trade, people don't usually trade good people. Like what? Who are we going to trade? The founder of Google in exchange for 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 her? No, like you 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 got to change trade someone they want and someone they want is typically someone we don't want um people 
are acting as if he was just walking down the streets of Brooklyn, hanging out, and then we just snatched him and traded him. No, he was, he's been in prison for 14 years. He's right. done some time. Uh, of course, he was sentenced to 25 years, maybe it was. I believe so. And he did 14, but he did time. You know, maybe he was doing crochet in the prison. He would have gotten released and, you know, deported for good behavior. We don't know. We don't know because he wasn't relevant until just now, yeah. until this situation. And I know people are upset about Paul Whelan and I have my opinions on that. But the charge of which Paul Whelan is being accused of uh, espionage, espionage in comparison to hashish oil is is very is it, the spectrum is very far apart so not saying that they have the right to hold him but i can't say that they don't have the right to hold him just like i couldn't say they didn't have the right to hold her like that's illegal in their country that everyone i think a lot of people are very blinded by this american system of legality which isn't even fair to americans but you know when you compare it to other countries and what their laws are you know we seem more civil more humane but that's the lens we view things as um or out of excuse me i think it it is unfortunate you know they sentenced her to nine years yes that's extreme that seems extreme, but we've had men who have been men and women who are American citizens who have been arrested on street corners in America for having less for having an ounce. I don't know. I don't know this lingo, an ounce or less. And, you know, they're doing, you know, almost life sentences. So and now it's become a multi million billion dollar industry. So, you know, let's not make it seem like the American system is, is so great. Like it targets people. But if you comp yes, nine years was a lot for her, but I'm sure there are people in America who got nine years too. I think my thing is I can't understand people not being able to just recognize that we brought an American citizen home. And if I, an American citizen, leave this country and something happens to me in another country, I want to know that America has my back. And I know people have brought up, you know, the things that she said about America. Well, you know, that's the beauty of being an American and having an, the right to have an opinion. I meant to look into things that they people claim she said, but I didn't care well, because at the end of the day, she's an American. Not and only that, but let's let's call out the highlight, the hypocrisy, right? Because if you speak ill of uh, the country, especially as it pertains to uh, systemic racism mm -hmm. um, and uh, how uh, black and brown and underprivileged people are treated in this country, then all of a sudden you're un-American. Mm -hmm. You hate America. And then that's how you get people who feel that you that just have to how, rot in a prison. Right. And they say you should never disrespect their country. But these are the same people who criticize the president just because he happens to be a member of the opposite party. Facts. Like, is the president, is there not a more uh, important symbol or position in the country to represent America than the, than the president that yeah. should be respected. No, you're absolutely right. So, you know, go, let's go Brandon and all this stuff. Like y'all want to talk about being patriotic, like but you A straight up disrespect. Straight up disrespect. And I, I don't care. Right. Like, I mean, criticize them. Like I, it's, Cri it's, it's fine. And disrespect are two different. Well, things. I'm just saying like, if that's how you want to be, then that's fine. But don't sit here and say somebody else is un American for criticizing the country when you're essentially doing the same thing mm -hmm. because you're criticizing the most important, one person. of the most important, well, I guess the most important person in the, in the country, which mm -hmm. is the president, most powerful person in the free world. So just want to call that out. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think another thing that, like I said, you've always joked about me getting my American citizenship. I mean, getting my Ghanaian citizenship and I could have, I think when I was 18, I was going to pursue dual citizenship. And I remember Tina was straight up like, uh, you better keep that American passport and keep that American citizenship. Cause if something happens to you in another country, Ghana's not coming to get you. Ghana ain't coming. Ghana ain't coming. Ghana ain't got those resources. Ghana going to be looking at America. Like you going to get her and they're going to be looking at Ghana. Like, no, she's yours. Uh, uh, Ghana. I have, I don't have time to be debated about. Ghana going to be like, you take care of yourself. You got this. You got this. May <laughs> stay, the Lord stay strong. May, may the Lord God, be with God you. God be with you. That's it. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the beauty of being American. You know, you go like that. I was raised that blue passport is, is a, is a protector. Having that blue yeah. passport with you, it, it makes you significant in the world. 
So, yeah. you know, I think everyone should have that peace that of knowing if I leave this, if I leave this country for a vacation, for a basketball game, whatever it is, and something goes sideways, my country is coming for me. It also helps to be a notable professional athlete. Oh, so it does. Let's, let's not act like that didn't oh, factor yeah, it in. Does. And I mean, she's so, won the America uh, gold medals in the Olympics. She, she's, I mean, she's won tournaments for Russia. Like you'd think that they would have been more lenient. And I think the timing of everything is unfortunate. I'm sure if this happened two years ago, three yeah. years ago, when we weren't in the middle of Russia being in a war with Ukraine, things might have executed differently but i think you know she was used as a pawn it was it was convenient timing oh, yeah. i think I, I don't know that nine years would because people have brought up that someone else had re, another woman i think she was a white woman had been arrested in russia and maybe did two months or whatever was deported got a very light sentence i think this was a a prisoner of convenience and she, you know they made a statement with her and it's, it's propaganda. That's what you do. They took advantage of an opportunity. Yeah. And it's also uh, been posited by uh, Waylon's family. His sister was on one of those, one of those far right. Uh, was it, is it Newsmax? Oh, she's far right? No, she was on, on the show. Was okay. it Newsmax or something like that? I don't know this stuff. I don't um, know this Yeah, man. it's like way right. And because this, this clip got shared in the, in the cousin's group chat where she said there's um, Russia has always classified Paul differently than the other prisoners that they have mm -hmm. because they, I guess he's more valuable because of what they assume, assume for him, assume of him to be. So it's been widely reported, of course, that they were never going to do a two for one or Brittany for <clears throat> mm -hmm. Brittany and, and Paul for, for the, uh, I don't even know dude's name. I'm just going to keep calling the merchant <laughs> for Something the, doubt. for Dot. the, for the, for the merchant, Demi Peter Dot? Dimitri, Victor, whatever, you know, the Russian Vladimir, Vladimir. I've always liked Vladimir. that name. Vladimir. Vlad. 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 I, I really nice like name. the nickname Vlad. Yeah. Uh, so she said, yeah, he was, they've always classified him differently. So, you know, they didn't, it would as a long shot, but from everything that Russia has said, since he's been, you know, captive is, that he's a high value mm -hmm. asset essentially. Uh, and she also said, I mean, let's not forget that this is Russia. So they probably knew that trading Brittany for, for the merchant would cause some political, uproar. yeah, political uproar. And like, I mean, this is the same, this is the same entity, Russia that meddled in, in an election mm -hmm. uh, and then was huge with misinformation on the web leading up to that election. So, <clears throat> Hey man, Vladimir be playing chess. Vladimir, I, I, Look. I've spent most of my life confused about him because I've watched so many, like my mom used to be into spy shows. So I think there was a good portion of my life that I thought Vladimir Putin was part of one of the spy shows that she watched. And then I got into adulthood and realized that this is a real person who is running this country like the scripts of all the spy shows that mm. I've watched. And I'm just very perplexed. I'm Vlad also ain't playing. He's not. And I just don't know. I, my thing is Vlad's not going to live forever. We're calling I don't him, know. We're calling him Vlad. He's really going to send around. some, he's he's gonna right. send some <laughs> operative here. Like you disrespect <laughs> the Kremlin. Um, I mean, I'm sure somebody calls him Vlad. He, not us. Somebody. Not the likes of us. I mean, he don't know where he come over here. He ain't nobody. He's, he's gonna he come. He come to shop. He ain't nobody. You better he, have. You better have a set with him. He's he's gonna sit. There's gonna be some. Knock let him on the let door. him stroll up some here. Solar sales people go <laughs> to the door. <laughs> um, but what was I gonna say? Um, I'm gonna call him Vlad though. You think Obama called him Vlad? Listen, Vlad, tired of your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was actually that? pretty good. Um, oh, I got, I got, you know, I, I got impersonation skills. Don't sleep. Yeah, they're all right. Don't sleep. Um, what was I going <laughs> to say? Just like, um, oh, I wanted to. I got a good one. Remind oh, me later. God. 
Just we, do it now. No, I don't want to do it. Because it, it, it's not going to vibe. But okay. I'll, I'll do um, it later. So one thing in my research while I was preparing for this episode, I was reading up on Paul Wheeling. Re- that's right. Like we do research here at Rush Vibes. We do. Sometimes. We, sometimes. Because um, I wanted to get more knowledge. I had listened to a segment on NPR, and that's really what triggered it. And I found out that this dude has citizenship in four countries. So I was, I was like... Granted, United States, Canada, Britain, and Ireland. Yes. His parents are British. Ireland. Born, but he was born in Canada and then they moved to Michigan, I think. So, and I, I don't know the Irish. Maybe one of his parents is Irish. Whatever. One, I didn't know you could have citizenship in more than two countries. I knew dual citizenship. I didn't know, is it quadruple citizenship when it's four? Um, what are all these other countries doing to help get their citizen? Because he's not, technically he's only a fourth American citizen. So Fourth of a American citizen. That's what I meant. Um, what said, so right? there's still three fourths of citizenships that need to be contributing. So what are all the, again, I don't know the perspective. I'm not in the UK. I'm not in Canada. So I don't know if, if there's negotiations in mm-hmm. that capacity, but why is everything on America to get him out? Is it because he lived here? I mean, he's got, he equally has citizens in all these countries because, but the ex he's, he was a Marine. Okay. And because, because that he's, I, I think he's more, he's more of a pawn than, than Brittany probably because it, they're using his circumstances mm-hmm. as a reason for there to be outrage and uproar because Brittany was brought home sooner. That's all it is. If you think but about it. not being charged with espionage and I'm not, people I, don't, pe- I'm not going to speak people, the politics of it, but you know, I, read, I read his his story. I read it from the BBC. I didn't want to read it from like a tainted American source. <laughs> I read it from the BBC. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is that funny? Uh, nothing. Nothing is not funny. They're a reputable source. They are. They, they absolutely are. But I didn't want. I, I genuinely didn't want the American <laughs> perspective. So I I, I went I went yeah. ac- across the pond. Sure. And. I don't know for someone who has, and this is with no disrespect for him at all. This is me just looking at facts. If I didn't know names or anything, it's questionable. You know, he is, he was a former Marine. He was discharged on grounds of bad conduct. He works in security or worked in security. Um, security, security, which is again, questionable. And he frequented, russia before his arrest so he was very Poroshki. much so he was very much so familiar with moscow have you ever had Poro- good Poro- good Poroshki. no i it's haven't worth, I don't it's know worth making Poroshki. the trip I it's don't. worth making the trip the only russian thing i've had in my life is vodka okay, and i don't even know that i've had russian vodka i've just you, had we're, vodka we're gonna get you some Poroshki. um get yourself some first because i know you've had some. it you've never had Poroshki. i, got, I, there are, I have my people take care i have my i have my people you think we're gonna just be out and open with it you know we in the we in somebody's cellar. Anyway, underneath um, somebody's kitchen. Anyway, good parochial. I um, if you read the facts, it's it's questionable. You know, he worked in security, frequented Moscow, frequented Saint Petersburg, and what he was the reason he was arrested on espionage is because a former marine handed him a flash drive. Inv- well, no, invited invited him to Moscow for his wedding mm. to kind of be like a guide for the other Americans because of his familiarity with Russia. Um, So he went Mm -hmm. and then he got a flash drive. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know the, the evidence that Russia has presented and Russia obviously doesn't owe us evidence because they're claiming this took place in their country. Um, We have to. Well, the tough thing about it is, is that if he's a spy, Mm -hmm. legit spy, he can't say I'm a spy. Exactly. And one, he sucks. But two, you know, he can't, he can't say that. Uh, but if he isn't a spy, can't say that. Can't really come out and say that either. So it's kind of like a tricky, kind of like a tricky. Uh, Why can't you say he's not a spy? Easily be like, no, our spies has already left the premises. So let this guy go. I'm just it's, saying it's from, from just my delicate. perspective, if you just read the facts, it's kind of it's like if you put this in an episode of Jack Ryan, I'd be like, eh. But okay. I can't speak to that. I'm not no. him. I'm I don't know who arrested him and found something. I just think to accuse 
a random American of espionage is a reach if you don't have something credible. Not saying, and maybe he's not committed espionage, but I think he is an individual of value. Clearly. It could be he's an individual of value or he's not. And that's why it's like, well, we're not going to trade some big guy for this dude who's not, he's not on our books. Right. So why, like, we can't trade some merchant of death ending of civilization. No, we already have a merchant of death. Yeah. So I don't know. This is tricky. I feel for his family. I I can only imagine um, what this bittersweet moment, but they also seem to be very mature and I, I applaud them for that because there hasn't been any, Well, they've, they've also been dealing with this for a while. They have been two years yeah. now. Um, if I'm 20, not mistaken, he was arrested in 2018, 20, 18. Okay. So four years. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I applaud how mature they were and, you know, supportive. See, they seemingly, the, 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 um, statements that were released on their behalf regarding, um, Brittany, uh, that was touching to me because they definitely could have been very negative, um, and definitely could have, uh, taken a, just a, a bad approach about the fact sure. that their relative has not been released. Yeah. Um, and it definitely brings light to a lot of Americans who are essentially locked up abroad. I used to watch the show on, I think it was TLC, but that's a different level. Like these are people who are like trying to smuggle heroin and stuff and get caught. Perosh. Anyway, um, we are glad that Brittany is home. Absolutely. Um, I know she's still being kind of like debriefed and prepared. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you know, but this is probably what got everything handled. It's probably you had no a third, a third party that people aren't aren't aware of and aren't really talking about, which is how you hide in plain sight. But Vin Diesel put a picture on Instagram. He said, and his caption, his caption was, I need Brittany Griner home by Christmas. All I'm saying is it happened like two weeks later. All I'm saying is Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel said, I need no role. How do, how do you know? I know. How do you, how do you know? I just know. He said the man put it on Instagram. So, you know, it's real. He said, I need Brittany home by Christmas. Biden did it with two weeks to spare. But no. Listen, anyway. listen, no, you're not, you're not about to just slide. I'm you're not this. about to slide by this look. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel had nothing to do with this. All respect wait, Vin, for Vin no, Diesel. No, wait, wait, Vin Diesel. No, no. Took him and his, him and his clique, him and his family. No. Went over there with some chargers. <laughs> <laughs> listen, some flying Dodge chargers. And they got Vlad struck. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to fall back. I'm going to let y'all have Brittany. But I need Merchant. I'm not doing this. Vin was probably at the handoff. Not doing this. He probably was probably there. He was probably on the tarmac somewhere. Not doing this. Listen, all I'm saying is go check the two. Go check. Not, go check the date no, he posted it. None of this is relevant. And it happened like a, it happened within like a week. I'm, I'm just not, saying. No, we are happy. Brittany is home. Thanks obviously. to Vin Diesel. <laughs> no, because Dennis Rodman couldn't do. Like there are people who have Trump you heard? Have you heard anything? Rodman said he could, he could get it back, and we that heard from an, him since. That was another thing. Um, Paul, Rob. Paul Whelan was taken into cut into Russian custody during the Trump administration. Yeah. Trump said I wasn't going to bring him back. But now Trump is talking about him like, well, he's talking about him to say that he was able to withstand the pressure. Unlike Biden, because he said I wouldn't have traded him like a hundred times or a hundred years or something like that because of what punk it. He, yeah, he said it on true social. He said I could have got him out like years ago but they wanted no but all these people talk, like with their clout and my connections with putin and you know being peed on hey, and hot in hotels but that's alleged okay show them some respect no <laughs> if there there are there's like a handful of american presidents that will never get my respect hey. and he is among them the single let's, term okay twice so impeached okay sonny um let's assume mm-hmm. that because i know it's been Depending upon who you talk to, the do- the steel dossier has been pretty much debunked, right? But let's just, you know, let's step into an alternate universe, step into the multiverse for a second. Let's okay. assume that there's an alternate reality where like 40% of it is true. That he got peed on? Not only that, Obama has to be living rent free in that man's head for him to like have women pee 
like on a bed where Obama and the Obama stayed and like I, I'm just saying Obama I don't deal to, when you're dealing with Trump I don't Russia didn't he well yeah he's supposed to be, allegedly they're a useful idiot uh, I don't remember that part you don't remember that's what Russians call tools essentially tools? useful useful idiots uh, well, we'll talk about it later okay. over some pierogi. Um, I'm not eating this pierogi. I'm gonna. Have to oh, you gonna eat some pierogi? <laughs> I'm not gonna eat nothing. <laughs> you gonna eat some? We don't. But take, anyway, we, take a stroll. we are happy that Britney yes, is home. Absolutely. We're thankful that an American citizen who was being held unjustly, extensively. You said it, not me. Glad. She said it. Not, she said it. Not me. It was. I you mean, take, you can have her and the elf. Leave me. We're just glad she's home. An American is home. She's with her family. She gets to spend the holidays here. I am prayerful that her reacclimation to you know just American culture is is smooth. Cause and and I I hope that they have an amazing therapist with a therapy team, psychological team able to support her in the long term um because that is that is is trying i think for me what got me was when i saw that her locks had been she had to cut her locks and her locks were long and i and and hair is just a big part of your identity sure so i can imagine being in this this situation and then you know because every time you shower your locks freeze you choose to cut them off and then to be freed. Like, I'm sure that like, we don't know at what point she chose to cut her locks off. Or, um, or if she chose, or if she chose, I mean, that might've been, they might've, they might've told her not cut them shits off. Well, from what I heard, she chose to cut them off okay. because every time she was shower, they'd get wet and it's frigid temperatures. So it'd freeze. Oh, that makes so sense. She, it's so fresh. She, yeah. It's so, cold. um, you know, I felt well, I, like that was, the first thing I felt, not out of a vain, like vanity, but just like that problem. Like, I'm sure that's a big part of that. Yeah. That is a big part of her appearance or her identity, I'm sure. Yeah. So I, I know that was hard. So I just hope that they have a, I know, you know, this is America. We're going to take care of ours, especially once you're back home. Um, but I, I just hope that she has a good, and we, I mean, we know her wife is a good support system because um, that woman fought and fought for her. Um, and that's what you want in a partner, someone who is not going to rest, uh, until you get home. And I think it also shows that we as Americans are so privy to being looped into every part of a situation that things are happening behind the scenes that we don't, you don't know about until it's done. And that's kind of the annoying part about Americans that is she at? No. I mean, I think that's just most people in general, well, yeah. Americans. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's government. Like, they're, and even just seeing Sherelle's, ex, like, expression when she realized, when, when Biden told her that she was on a plane. Like, she wasn't, and she's the one fighting to the forefront. Mm. Um, she seemed a little, mm. you thought that was fake? You know, anytime yeah. there's a camera around, I'm just, and, and people know what the situation is, like, all right, we're going to invite you to the White House. And we're gonna have a camera crew there, but we're not gonna tell you what we're gonna tell you. But you think she like she didn't know? She might have known that maybe like a deal was being made or finalized. I don't think that because I'm, I'm just you know even Brittany I'm, didn't know until look, she was leaving Saudi Arabia. I'm not saying or the UA. I'm not saying it's not UAE. It wasn't genuine. I'm just you know I'm just skeptical. You know Sherelle stuff, right? looks like um, Derwin's baby mama from the game. Janae? Yeah. Mm. Coffee cup lids. <laughs> okay, I thought you were talking about eggs, but I didn't knock eggs up. It was just Janae. No. Um you, you called a woman eggs? Gave her the nickname eggs. I'm um I never want to revisit that ever again. <laughs> what to <it> do, eggs? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he tried it. Uh but yeah, so it's it, it's it's a good thing. That she's yeah. back. Um, yeah, shout out, shout out to BG and um, to all you people out there whining. And you can say it. Nah, I already, I've already cussed like twice. I'm trying to keep it at a have you at a minimum. 
Yeah. Well, I was imitating Barack. So technically I didn't say it. Some Barack's I, I imagine Barack to have said. Okay. Let's Did you see the Trevor the when he Trevor Noah had, had interviewed him? There's a there's a clip. Oh, when he said my friends call me Barack. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> No, you can't call me Barack. He was like, Yeah, my friends call me Barack. You should call me but yo, his timing is I just He's amazing. He is an amazing I miss, I, We all miss him. That's why we get him in person. I didn't I, mean, I didn't really appreciate him like I should have. I feel I'm like I'm like a I'm like a dude who lost his girl. Mm-hmm. Now she out there flourishing. Flourish. Remember like when he after Trump got sworn in and like two weeks later he was on Richard Branson's Island yes. like jet skiing. Yes. Living, living his best life. Absolute best life. Like come on, bro. You know the 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 meme where he was like in Africa or something and he was like talking to these kids and there's a little black boy in the window. Have you ever seen that one? Maybe. Oh. So there was a meme. It was shortly after Trump got sworn in. <laughs> there was the picture. And so somebody put the caption, like, you really about to leave us here with this orange muff? Because <laughs> the boy was looking like, I felt that for the first time. Like, and what I was actually, he supposed to do? We did his that. time. I don't know. Did his time and left peacefully. Bounced. But they needed, they needed that. Because they've been... They've they been heavily, it. heavily and now scrutinized. Michelle is getting her moment. Yeah. Her rightfully deserved moment. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, all you people out there whining and crying, oh, she, somebody talked about America and they left behind a Marine. Ask yourself why that is. Why was he, why, why was he left? Why hadn't he been brought home before? That's, but I already said it. I know. I'm, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm buttoning it up. It's questionable. Just ask yourself why that is. But I still feel for his And it's, it's crazy how anytime something like this happens where it slightly involves culture, like everybody automatically becomes a subject matter expert. So oh, like yeah. like now all of a sudden everybody's like an expert on <laughs> international espionage, yeah. espionage and international prisoner swaps. And maybe we just need to sit down. I do feel like if he really, like if they had something on him, they would have just killed him. I, See, mean, I feel like if he wasn't important, they'd have just killed him. Like if he was just dude. That's true. <laughs> right through the right through, right through the cell window. Dude is like, oh, waking up. But you know, oh, he, look he at the looks, sun. I don't know why he looks healthy. He's a beautiful more. He took look, him he, out. He looks healthy. He ain't keeping around no he ain't keeping around no lightweight. He don't keep no dead weight around. He knows. Trim the, you trim the he, fat. He's valuable in you trim some the capacity. you trim the fat, baby. That's rule number one. He's valuable in some capacity. In this economy? You ain't keeping around nobody unnecessarily. In the middle of a war? Yeah. <sighs> You're right. There's resources you gotta you gotta extend. I, you got just people hanging around. I wanna cut them around. I feel you. This is so he's, yeah, he's he's important. He's to, to somebody. To someone. Somebody's important. Anyway. Um You know what I was gonna say? What? That it's unfortunate that this good morning adultery scandal just took place mm. because So let's talk about that. Because I feel like Robin Roberts is probably the best person to have an interview when and if Brittany Griner is ready to talk. Robin is the best person for that. So you're a little, you're a little too high on Robin. And it makes me a little uncomfortable. I don't know why she's like your superwoman. She's not. <laughs> All of a sudden, she's. She's. Not, I just. I. Re, I, I feel like you got. I, her, I feel like you got her up there with Oprah, and it's not. I have a respect for you. Don't have a respect for Robin. No, Roberts. I mean I, it's Robin. It's Robin it's Ro yeah, but it's she, not Robin. It's Robin she, Roberts. Excuse me. It's Mrs. Roberts. Okay, but let's. But who let's, else? Let's calm. Let's calm. Go to Gail King. Let's calm you down. Think Gail King's gonna host Look, this first interview? of all, number Anderson one, Anderson Cooper. Number one, we still we we still ain't cool with Gail after that after that mess she pulled with Lisa Leslie. I'm trying to bring up some stuff on Kobe right after you, but we so don't mention her name. That's why I'm saying. If it wasn't for this Good Morning Adultery scandal. And you saw what she did to R. Kelly. I, R. Kelly did that. 35 years. R. Kelly. We're not going to talk about R. Kelly. I came here my whole career. We can talk about R. Kelly later. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Anyway, I think Robin Roberts would have been perfect Yo, for this dude the dropped, special. This dude dropped it. No, we're not, we're not segueing to him yet. I'm not ready to talk about this. Robert. So I'm very upset about that because I'm like, y'all, this would have been a perfect ABC primetime special by Robin Roberts. Sure, whatever. I'm not. I'm not that high on Robert. 
Robin Ro- what? Robert. I called her Robert. <laughs> I was, say that four times. I respect Robin Roberts, Are you obviously, sure? for what she's done. She's a pioneer. Is she? Absolutely. So then why don't you appreciate her? I'm just not that. I mean, she's cool, but I, I'm, she, she doesn't. She doesn't do it for me. I've never ran to the TV to turn it on for Robin I mean, Roberts. I don't run. To I, the I've TV. done it for Oprah. I've done it for. You, when have you ever appreciated Oprah? Excuse me. I spoke English. The big O. <laughs> 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 nah, ain't nobody ever called her that. That's uh, Oscar Robinson. Nah, I, I got I got love for Oprah. No. Oh. Mad love, mad love and respect. Um, Did whoopee. your mom watch Oprah? Mom's never really done the talk show thing. I didn't take her as that type. That's yeah, why I was like, you don't have. She didn't really do that. That's why I figured you didn't have a relationship with Oprah because my mom watched Oprah. I watched yeah. Oprah with my mom. That's great. You get a car, I watch that live. Yeah, yeah, I got love for Oprah. I do it for Oprah. Whoop, whoopee. Whoop is goat. Yeah. Um. There are people who there there are there are women. I guess Oprah in the, could do in the, the interview. Business. I guess Oprah could absolutely. Do the interview. If anybody should do it, it should be it should. Oprah. But Robin if it wasn't for this scandal, ABC should be the prime network to get it. You know who Brittany should give her first interview to? Some up and coming, up and coming, or uh, sort of a new media based <clears throat> platform, like Rush Vibes. Sure. That I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I thought that's where you were going. No. That I mean, I'd love. I'd love that. That, person. but I don't know that we make it past a lot of the noise. There's a lot of noise out there. Mm-hmm. But you gotta. You know, we're not consistently in the algorithm yet. That would algorithm. Algorithm. <laughs> algorithm. Um, uh, but yeah. no, I was. Thinking. So let's talk about your um. What you call them uh. Good morning, adultery. No, um, imitation. <laughs> what you call, dude? So I, I, I. No, no, no. I what did you call him? Com. I called I said, imitation. What? I said, crab. We're here for imitation crab. Um, imitation crab. Back to TJ Holmes. That's because Look. I. That's that's because people have referred to him as the replacement of TJ Holmes. Because he is. He's not. She he is. was hired with ABC two weeks prior. Because they the knew. Sca- no, they did not know ABC the scandal knew. was going to drop. ABC knew. No, they knew about. They knew about what was. You think ABC just now fin- finding out about? Uh, I think they found out everybody's at, draws that TJ been running up in. I no, think they've they been found they, out about when the Daily Beast they dropped been, it. They've been new. They did not know. Just, so Demarco Morgan is a graduate of. Oh, was Jackson, Demar- Demarco. Demarco. Oh, okay. Demarco. You he know is, his name. He is a graduate of Jackson State University, which okay. is also in the news recently. Um, of course. He is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. Okay. Incorporated. You a little you a little too familiar with his stats, okay? I'm not I don't know where you He's also gay, so you can Okay. Calm he better down. be. I was hoping that was next. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were hitting you were hitting too many he, I believe too many he highlights. Was a gra- I believe he also got his um graduate degree. It's either NYU or Columbia, one of the okay. accredited New York. Smart, and he's he's smart been based brother. in LA. Shout out. Okay, I already love him. So he's been killing it in LA two weeks prior to the scandal. When ABC had, caught he wind had of the already year. departed from his CBS you affiliate in LA. You cannot tell me no one They don't have a lot from of the black high, contributors. You can't tell me no one from the higher ups in ABC they don't knew. have a lot of light skinned black finish. contributors because they all went brown skinned. You can't tell me they didn't know what TJ and Amy was doing. They'd have pulled him off sooner. Nah. They didn't know, but as soon as news break, broke, they let him on the air that day. She didn't show up. But the next two days, they let both of them on the air. That's not smart. So what you do is... You let the ratings you jump have, 20%? You, hmm? I said you let the ratings jump 20% because that's what happened. Well, yes. Number one. Number two, you always have ace in the hole. So, so you, you got your... the ace? You keep your bench ready. Because you All never I'm know saying, when it's going to be next man up. So they had him. They had him. They had him in the bullpen. He was All warming I'm, up. All I'm saying is, Demarco is not T.J. Holmes. I know he, he's not a fill-in. Clearly, for TJ because Holmes. you said imitation crap. I did. You referred to him but as that's imitation because crap. Because I was upset. Because um, I really like T.J. Holmes, but apparently he's not. He's not a great individual. Aside from the fact that he's had three affairs. What is um, it about? Because I'm. I'm kind of go somewhere for a second. I'm gonna bring it back because I think this. This could 
segue into a larger discussion. We have a lot of topics to go. The culture. What is it about? Why they always bring on these light skinned dudes? Hmm? What's up with all these light skinned dudes? Like, why can't we get like a? Like you got the marker on there. Why couldn't we get like a? You know, a chocolate brother. I would have appreciated that. We stay getting discriminated against. You say we? Yeah. Aren't you teetering, team light skin? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm teetering. Aren't you teetering? Oh, see, I used to say I used to call myself high yellow. You're like, Psh. you're definitely not high yellow. No, I'm not high yellow. But you're like teetering um, light skin. Yeah, same playbook, man. They had, they, they, look, yeah, America, America, like Hollywood had the same playbook for years. Mm-hmm. Like, it would have been nice if they got like a you ain't, night, you ain't a, gonna a, switch it up. A dark skin, a darker brown skinned anchor. But, That's why I like. Um, but what's her name? Amy on uh, on CNN. Abby. Is it Amy? I love Abby. It's Abby. Abby's so cute. Yeah. Um, but that could just be there aren't a lot of dark skin. But you know what? Jerron, he's in Chicago. I went to a Carnegie Mellon program with him in my senior year of high school. He's a news anchor. You can calm down. Oh no, Jerron is not he's not dark skinned. He's, he's the same color as DeMarco. See? See? Maybe that that See? says that they were not doing enough initiatives to bring darker skinned people into it, baby. into the news media. But anyway, DeMarco is accredited and I want him to be recognized. I feel bad because whether they knew according to you or not, this is someone who has worked 20 years in the industry who has, you know, made themselves reputable to get a position with GMA. And I hate that he's being overshadowed by this scandal where it makes it seem like he's just coming in as TJ's replacement and not necessarily being recognized for the skilled anchorman that he is. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, he's TJ's replacement. Don't, don't come in here with that sad sap story. He is what it is. He, this brother's on TV every single morning. Let's not, let's let's pump how the brakes on the woe with me. How would you feel? I'd feel like I'm black, I'm on TV, and I'm rich is exactly how I would feel. No sob story for him. I'm Get not up. sobbing. I'm just the saying. The freak out of here. It's pr- it, the overshadowing of the scandal takes away from the fact that he's worked hard to get to this And position. none of this can take any of that away from him. He's got his credentials. He'd be all right. Awfully rich. Coming from you, Miss Imitation Crab. I did call him Imitation you, Crab. Ex- and you, I, won't you dis- did. I will not deny it. But I. that's because I like TJ. I like his voice. I like his banter. I like his style. Apparently, you ain't the only one. No, I'm. <laughs> it's a good I'm thing you ain't. Good thing you ain't had a reason to be close to him. Do otherwise, not, do not leave your girl around TJ. Otherwise, he might have been cupping your cheeks in that he, in that private private investigator and video. He, well, there would have been something to cup. It's true. Just gonna put that out there. Is that, up, is that upper thigh. Oh, I saw a tweet when they posted that picture and someone said he cupping absolutely nothing um they were hurt they were hurt they were like he's doing a lot of effort to try and find something because you know it's like three different shots of him walking back and forth and like smacking her butt every time yeah, and they said he was like continuously trying to <laughs> it's fascinating to me how different people's preferences are mm-hmm. like because you 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 are yourself Right. Most people aren't going to step outside of themselves and consider what what somebody else may think is attractive or Mm -hmm. sexy or whatever. Because I like. Because I don't watch Good Morning America. I I, I really don't like it's on in the mornings because you watch ABC, but I'm I'm not really like in it unless they're interviewing somebody who was of interest to me. So obviously I was a little. Uh, slow to get up to speed when the scandal broke because I'm like, all right, who are these people? Why are they significant? Because I knew it wasn't George, it wasn't Robin, it wasn't Michael. So I'm like, when are they on? And I'm just looking at Amy and I'm like, she didn't do it for you. I don't, I don't see it. And we all know, like, it's it's no secret. Anybody who pays attention, I love curvy women. My wife is a curvy woman. You've made exceptions. There's exceptions to everything, but by and large, I'm like Coke bottle, baby. Like you. After it's been recycled. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was all, when when so I'm like, okay, because I only really seen it from the waist up, mm-hmm. right? A couple clips I seen she sit behind a desk. So maybe there's something there. But then I see these crispy 4K uh 
private investigator videos. And TJ wants to smack her on the butt. So I, you know, I'm watching on my phone. So you know, I do the pinch to zoom. <laughs> I'm like, ain't there. Like TJ, come well, on, we bro. Don't know what his wife, his current, like that might be his preference. But this is what I'm saying. It's fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. But you never know what situation would have you. Like you've made exceptions before. Certain things can make you make an exception. I made the one, personality. I made, I made one you know, exception. Personality, like one. there, are, there are reasons why. I've someone, made one exception okay, so in thirty-five years. You've deviated once. You can't. Count. It was a, it was a quick deviation. <laughs> I came back home, baby. I came back I home. Like it's at least twice. Nah, every every actually. It's not a deviation because every official girlfriend I've had, operative work, has had a figure. Lies. No, it's not. Because I've met one and she didn't have much of anything. No. She didn't. She didn't. I'm telling you, hey, yo, no, when you try to convince somebody to stop your voice, you high. high. If we can, like, you, you can go to that. You can throw some baritone. Go to, that, go to that next level. Where's that bass? She, she had nothing. She had no. Okay, so context, because context matters. So, and, I, and this is, we should absolutely not be having this conversation on the podcast, but, so I'm, I'm probably going to cut this. Um, when I was dating this person, relative to my <laughs> perception of what <laughs> curve was, she absolutely was curvy. But my, my, Your as my, as my experience, skewed. as my experience have I experienced as I've experienced other women as I've gotten older? Obviously, my perception of that has grown. It's evolved, constantly evolving. I'm a human being, yeah. but at the time, yeah, absolutely. So maybe through evolution, people evolve into someone who doesn't have as much body. Nah, that's deep. That's deep. That's going back. That's a lot. Sometimes it's a lot to maintain. Nah. It's a lot. Maybe it's worth it. God simpler. gave you that. Don't be. Don't be ungrateful. All I'm saying is, when if like these things happen, sometimes you can't control the person. That it happens with. Well, it's and, and that and that's kind of what I was I was going to try to get to. Like maybe it actually maybe it is true love. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's true love. I think maybe it's, it's I love. think it's a it's true lust, and it's it's gonna last as long as it lasts and fizzle out. I know they're talking about bringing her back and not bringing him back, and that's starting like some conversations. Because he, yo, it's gonna start a race war. TJ been been all up and through everybody, oh, and they're he's like been dipping his chip. He like COVID. He yeah, is. he hit everybody. I'm low key impressed. You shouldn't be impressed by somebody's no, adultery, shouldn't. but I'm low key impressed. He's speaking dedicated. of um, speaking of adulterers. What? Where are you uh, going with <laughs> your boy? Oh God, my man, Derek Jackson. It's back in the back in the uh, the social media news. I still know nothing about him before his scandal. And I really don't even remember. Yeah, and apparently he's been doing what he does for like years. Being he's, a, he's like an OG, he's like an OG influencer, apparently. Um, but he announced via his Instagram that he and his wife had uh, gotten uh, divorced. But I heard he only did that because he got busted in Miami with another woman. So, as I'm setting the table here. You're, you're, oh, I'm sorry. You're, My you're, bad. Do you need napkins? <laughs> um, with the same article, or with the same post, I because I found this uh, the, on a, on an article. Mm-hmm. So, next to the Instagram announcement was a was a uh, collection of screenshots mm-hmm. or pictures of him in Miami with a uh, unnamed, unidentified. Although I think since she's been. She's all over social media because, you know, the greatest sleuths in the world are on Twitter. A uh, woman. And in all the pictures, it looks like he's trying to hide. Every single one of them. <laughs> I didn't even recognize. That. Every single one of them. I sent it to Alan. Like, I sent it to Alan. I'm like, this, is he? I was like, this is literally a hiding trying to hide his face in every single photo. That's fine. Look at him. It's not going to be on his page, Jessica. You're going to have to go to. I'm on his page. I'm looking on the search results. Here, I'll send it to you. You don't have to. I found it. But yes, he. Every um, single one of those photos, like, dude is trying to hide his face. So I'm like, number one, how are you going to be like 6'1, six, 6'2, six, buff, buff, dark skin, trying to hide, trying to hide your, like, trying not to stand out in a crowd? Like, you're going you're gonna to stand out in most crowds. So. And you, Derek Jackson. So this is so complicated because 
Obviously. So for my algorithm, there's more. Finish what is hel- what is hilarious uh-huh. is the picture he used to announce his divorce from his wife. Is that the one where he's holding where he's her? He's holding her. Like, that's what picture you put when you're getting engaged. That's not a picture you put when you're divorcing your wife. Bruh. That's what happens when you don't have, like, a, a management team. And you're handling all of your stuff yourself. So, people, my per my algorithm. It's crazy how capitalism is wild. I got a, I got a notification from Uber. About what? <laughs> it says, Derek Derek keep Derek. Ukraine moving. Ukrainian drivers are saving lives. Donate now. Brother, no, I've said this before. I said this before we went to Vegas. No disrespect. Shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Facts. Nothing. Nothing. Um, can we can we get some some money? Some of this money that's been cut from the HBCU budget that's going not not that this they taken from HBCUs and send it to Ukraine, but I'm saying we're gonna cut the budget for HBCUs, but we're gonna keep sending billies over to Ukraine. Can we get some of that money and fund their HBCUs that have been criminally underfunded for years? Years. Can we do that? Years. Can we walk and chew gum at the same time? I can we take that. care of Ukraine? Take care of, take care of HBCUs? Huh? I mean, Ukraine has a pretty badass president. I think he and let's let's talk about this because dude we, doing photo shoots and like he on the cover of magazines. Time, like bro, ain't you supposed to be Why like? Why is he on the cover of an American magazine <laughs> during war? <laughs> during war, like you you got time for this? It's time. He's on time, so he must have time. Like you ain't like you don't got to be ducking between <laughs> between Pivot. like I don't and that's. And that's that's how I but and that's hard and that's diff- why that's why it's hard for me to take it. Maybe maybe my per, maybe my forget. understanding of war is different because when we've learned about war, it's all like two hundred years ago or whatever when we were coming up in school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then everything else was as a kid. World TV TV wasn't like it was now, so I don't remember seeing images of you know wars that happened while while we were alive and coming up. But I'm like. How am I supposed to take this one? Doesn't involve me, us, right? We're sending aid, but I'm like, okay, it's not here. Mm-hmm. How am I supposed to take this thing seriously when your boy over here posing for magazine covers? Like, I mean, it was, it was nice photos. It was. They did shout that. out to the shout out to the photographer and the editor. But, I, but you that's want modern me to, day war? You want me to take this seriously? Modern day war involves photo shoots and all that stuff. Man, but get the, I. Get out of here. There was a moment, I think I had like a month where I completely forgot that we were, so, and I heard something and people were like, yeah, we're still at war with Ukraine. I was like, I, mm-hmm. no, we aren't, they are still at war. Um, oh yeah, we're not at war. We're here. Mind our own business. Getting our we're citizens. We're not at war with nobody. Getting our citizens out mind of, our, out mind of our damn business. Um, you made like two pivots and I can't even go back. I did. Derek Jackson. But you went somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, how he was holding his the engagement, oh, the picture. engagement picture. picture. So there have been two, per my algorithm, there have been two calls to action regarding all of this. So okay. first, I was scrolling and came across this video where old girl, bef- I guess it was before he announced the divorce, where she essentially like. In the pool. She wasn't in the pool. Oh, okay. She was cursing people. Oh, oh she, yeah, yeah. You saw that? I saw it. I didn't realize that was her. That was her. And mm. she was, it was, na- I was like, oh. This is some African style. Like the, the bloodline is there. She, she was like, you will become widows and your kids will become vagabonds. I was like, wow, this is um some serious. It definitely sounds like some of Jesus teachings. Absolutely. Exactly Just what he would want us to do with our old test, new Testament yeah. wrapped up in there. Yeah. Um, so I was like, wow, she went really hard just to end up being embarrassed um, because she did all of that essentially like saying get my name out your mouth and then he used their you know engagement photo shoot photos to announce that they were getting divorced after photo surface of he and his new girlfriend well what's crazy is 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 there have been other theories that have surfaced online and that she used to dress my- that's where i was going next okay go no please, no, no you got please, it please go. no you okay go. so that she used to dress not like scandalous or nothing but you know where she but would show her teetering provocative sure, she was not you know if it was she teetering she would just show her body yeah she would show she would wear clothes that would that show her, her body, body but yeah. were still modest I, mm-hmm. I would think the photos i saw but that she was they, she looked like a baddie like she had baddie potential but i've only ever seen you her, said it i I've, didn't i've only ever so, seen her in like the craze you potential. said it i didn't so i will agree um <laughs> so but when she agree. met when she met 
Derek, he, because I guess, I, I guess they're a Christian couple. Which <laughs> irony in and of itself. But anyways, um, that he had influence over how she dressed. So mm-hmm. now she had to dress extremely conservatively. But then he ended up leaving her. For someone who doesn't dress conservatively. Because per my algorithm, men like Derek, a lot of men will... So, no, no, no. Because I'm not going where you think we're going. So I owe you not an apology, mm. but I owe you a, a commitment. So obviously we talked about this theory. I would call it a myth, but this theory, working social cultural theory that black men degrade, put down, disrespect. Mm hmm. Black when they're not interested in black women mm-hmm. at a high clip mm-hmm. or at least a higher clip than men of any other race and talking they call about Latina spicy. <laughs> they call Latina spicy. Um, I'm not all the way there yet. Mm. I still I still think it's an exaggeration. Mm. I still think it's uh, hyperbole, mm. and I think people are uh, taking their very real. And uh, very true experiences. And those should be respected. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's not for me to sit here and say, no, a black man wouldn't tell you that. If it happened, then yes. And no, he shouldn't have said that. And black men shouldn't do that to any woman. But especially women who look like their mothers. Um, That is real. And that conversations about that men should absolutely listen to women when they're expressing how they feel when those comments have been told to them directly from black men but my beef comes where that gets multiplied out to most black men because you i don't know most black men we just don't so it's unfair to say most black men you have to be careful with the language to say most black men i've encountered that's a totally different state two totally different statements but Admittedly, I don't really get involved in a lot of those conversations. So I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to do some some research and I'm willing to look into more of these uh, these topics and try to try to try to dive into black Twitter and just kind of see as you should. Yeah. But um, as the father of three black daughters. But see. Because I because I disagree that a majority of black men degrade that a majority of black men um, will openly not choose black women or how, however the, the statement is because I disagree with that doesn't mean that I somehow uh, am less supportive or I'm not going to. Um, give my daughters the space to express their feelings as it relates to that matter. If it's something that they end up um, being involved with, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm any less sensitive. Are you sure? Cause you didn't really allow your wife to. Hmm? I said, are you sure? Cause you didn't really allow your wife the space to. Yes, I did. No, I was, I was not attacking. And this is why, because you said, I didn't understand what you were saying. And this always happens with us because I feel like there's a conflation happening where if I don't agree, I don't understand. And that's not one, always true one. And number two, that's not fair because what, what are we even doing this for? Cause that, that's normally what happens when it's you telling me something from your point of view or an opinion or a stance. Mm-hmm. I disagree. It's, no, you don't understand. But a the, lot of but, times ooh, when you ooh, take ooh, a stance ooh, of ooh, disagreement, ooh, you're ooh. in a, in the perspective of trying to correct so, me as no, opposed to listening to what me. I was, that's what it feels like. What I was saying is you have to be, I was not disagreeing. Even if, um, I was stating out the fact that you nor I know a majority of black men. We just don't. I know a lot of black men. You don't know the majority of black men. And you know a lot of black men relative to the amount of people you know, but that's still very small. This is this is the part I'm trying to get you to see and understand. All I'm saying is, is it's not fair to say the majority of, unless there's like some sort of poll, unless there's some sort of research, which there isn't. It's just everything is anecdotal. 
so it's hard. so you can't that? no you weren't so i was not saying that um it's not true uh i'm not saying that it's not possible because i think anything's possible but nobody has that information I think and i think it's and i think it's unfair for you to say majority of black men based on your point of view and then say i'm being i'm not allowing you the space to understand your point of view because from my perspective all the black men i've been around and the black and the majority of the black men that i've hung around don't do the things that you're saying so do i not get to have my reality too is my reality not real as compared to yours and that's where i was trying to come across that's what i was sure trying to get don't at. do it or you just haven't had that conversation no i'm that. sure that they don't do it because i'm very particular with who i hang around so again that's my reality so is mine not true because i'm a man and you're a woman all i'm saying is that no a answer, lot my, of answer times, my question no, that's, that's a legitimate question that's not rhetorical answer the question is my reality not real and yours is does yours supersede mine no i'm not saying that okay so that's all i was trying to do so it wasn't a matter of me not giving you the space or not understanding where you're coming from i was all i was trying to do was to frame the conversation in the right context because if it's just going to be oh my experience means this is what happens everywhere mm-hmm. the majority of interactions well then then that means mine has to be this then I, it could be the same for me and my experiences too so then where does that leave us all i want to say <clears throat> is that a lot of times you, you weren't listening to me you just waiting to respond yes because okay. you do the same thing okay um cool. a lot of times when cool. i am voicing an experience that i've had and speaking on not not speaking for the entire majority, but speaking for a large portion of the majority of women in whether it be black women, women not in the general, majority, but a large portion of the majority. A large portion. Okay. Um, you and it's probably because you are a writer. I'm not a writer. But you tend to always want things to be politically correct. So sometimes you're too busy trying to correct the statement as opposed to don't shake your head. Mm. Don't shake your head. Don't say because mm, I'm not having you finish <laughs> saying you're, See, you're, you're already doing it. You're, you're literally doing what I'm telling you. Uh, you're too wrong. busy trying to correct what is incorrect in the statement instead of listening. Because sometimes someone can say something and it's not necessarily the linear thing they say that the true message is sometimes it's it's digging deeper and i think a lot of times for people who are very grammatical who are good with grammar and punctuation and all of that when they're listening to people speak they're hearing the flaws of where they are like how you say you can't blanket this you can't blanket that but okay yes in the blanket statement which may not be correct to say there's 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 a message there's a greater message within that that I'm trying to get you to understand. And that greater message is I've encountered situations where I have been standing at a bar, minding my business, talking to my girls. And a black man has walked up to me and said, I don't really even rock with black chicks, but you're all right, sir. I'm drinking my drink, minding my business. I have not solicited you. I have not made eye contact with you. Yeah. Why did you come to me with this negativity? So it, it's, that's what I'm, I, I think, no, that's what I'm trying to get you to hear. It, yes, that's not what I you said. I see your point that you shouldn't blank it, but I, I said a lot. And, and you know, words, this words, is a word, uh, the world of 7 billion people. Words have meaning. So if I say a lot of people, I could mean 100 people. I could mean 1,000. I could mean 10,000, 10 But you million. also said majority. A majority. When out of 7 billion, a majority can be... A hundred, six billion, whatever. (laughs) What I was, but what I was simply saying is that there is a large population of black men who go out of their way to verbalize their preference while diminishing, insulting, putting down the ones they don't preference. Based off what? Is it necessary? Based off of statistics. Who's statistics? Black women, like myself, who have encountered these black men who find it necessary to let us know that we are not their type. So what you, what I, I think you don't understand is 
No, you, no what you, I don't understand. I said, what then, you're not understanding. I said, I said think. So uh, you may or may not. Um, as you just explained, what you here? just described to me was a, it was an individual. Um, it's been individuals. I gave you one example. You gave me an individual experience that you had. Mm-hmm. That is an example of things that you've experienced a number of times and that other women have expressed that they've experienced a number of times, but it's far different than the statement that you and a lot of other black women routinely make. And that this thing happened to me, this thing happened to me a number of times. So therefore this always happens to all black women on behalf of all black men. That is where your argument, that, that is, lot. that is where you know, that is where your argument went. Mm-hmm. But what you just described to me was far more eloquent, far more pointed than last week. And that's all I was trying to say, because believe it or not, there's a difference between this is my experience and the majority of those are two totally different arguments. And because we're on a microphone, right. And while our audience may not be, may not be huge, who knows who sees this at some point. And if you're speak, if you are on camera speaking and say all black men or majority of black men do this and that, that can be kind of dangerous because I don't think, I hope that that's not your belief. If it is, then fine. That's yours to have. But if it's not saying that instead of, instead of saying, man, I've had these experiences. So this leads me to think, or this has my experience has been the majority of black men that I've encountered. I've had these negative experiences with, I just feel like that's not fair to say because you haven't had a run in with majority of all black men out there. And people, for some reason, seem to take people on Twitter and all and somehow they represent society. And that's not true. It's just Twitter. There's like 250 million users on Twitter. Like, that's it. And all of them, a majority of them aren't black men. Mm-mm. So why are we taking using Kanye West as an example? Why are we taking random handles on Twitter and using these as our examples to represent the majority of black men when that's not the case. Why are we using dumb it dumb dudes at the bar who say something completely out of pocket, completely disrespectful, completely unnecessary, and saying that using this to frame our opinion of how the majority of black men treat black women or speak on black women. I just don't think it's fair, but I can understand how you get there because it's an emotional thing. It's gotta mm-hmm. be. I'm sitting, I'm emotional sitting here listening to it. Cause it's the first time I've heard it. And I don't appreciate that. Cause you know how I feel about you. I would hope <laughs> you're my wife. I get up. I still ask you, you still ain't giving me the address for, you know, old buddy who said the whole, I got to lift weights to pick you up in high school thing. Cause when I go to Worcester, I'm looking them up. It's not necessary. So, but I, get I gave that, you but one you, example, I, but that's not the only I understand it's not the only happened. example, but no matter how many examples you have, unless you got like 2 million or so, 200 billion. I guess from my perspective, if I have had at least 10 encounters like this and, and I we, get on we Twitter wrap at and I get on Twitter and I see other women who have, had, we're not encountering the same men, no. chicken, San Diego, chicken, LA, chicken, Seattle. Like we're not encountering the same men. So that, that, is a lot it's easy to read this to read these threads and be like wow that's probably a like, lot of black men it's probably like 100 dudes <laughs> that's I mean, still a lot of black that's still but a lot of not, men but that's not the majority like, but see but okay so if we use that example I'll, I'll say I I see guys on Twitter who say man I don't know why these why, what black men they're hanging around I don't do that my boys don't hang my boys don't do that and then we would say, where are your boys at? <laughs> I'm just saying. I think it's an unfortunate topic. But I think it's more of an emotional topic, which oh, is why absolutely we is. can say, a, we, we, why we would say a lot. And it is a lot. Because yeah, when if you, you think of your when scope, you build, if when I you, think of the scope of when, black men I've interacted with, and out of 100%, one of the most, 50% have probably said something along the lines of my preference is one white of the most, women. One of the most dangerous things you can do is build an argument on emo- off emotion. Well, that's the society we live on. No. Nah, society that y'all live in. You live in it too. You don't act like you ain't emotional. I want the dude's address. Anyway. I want to know where he lives. Back to Derek Jackson, who built this woman who was coy and hid herself and her body and then went for a woman who is a complete... 
essentially the woman he's attracted to. Why do men do that? I don't know. Aren't you a man? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Derek Jackson. Speak. Speak for the men. I'm not, I will not. Absolutely. I absolutely see, will not scared. speak for the you're men. Scared. No, I'm not scared. I but, can't. I can't bear but this. One. Has been an argument that's online that men have a tendency of being attracted to a certain type of woman, yes. marrying said woman, yes. and then converting said woman into a woman that won't appeal to other people. And then having a wandering eye for the same type of woman they had think, that they're not allowing I to think flourish that's, anymore. I think that's human nature. Isn't it? Like, I mean, people buy houses. I feel like I flourished you. People, people buy, no, not, not exclusive to men and women in relationships, but like people buy shoes. You get the shoes, you wear them, they fly, they go with your fit. And then you're like, oh, well, I want another pair. TVs, like just consume consumerism in general. I think when you, when you're chasing something, the allure of it is always greater, I think, for most people mm -hmm. than that, than the reality of, of having it. For so most people? when you, you know, cause it's like when people say, oh, you should still, you should still have the relationship. Uh, once you get married that you had when you were dating, because mm -hmm. when you're dating, you're trying to prove your worth. You're trying to prove that, um, you know, you're the person for, for them and that they should settle down with you and blah, 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 blah. But you should keep that energy throughout your marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why that's such a, a harped on statement is because most people don't do that. There's usually some sort of fall off and then people have to, you know, rekindle, rediscover it. Then it's effort, it's work. And then, you know, some people get there and some people don't, but I don't think it's just relationships. I think it's just most people when something become, when you, when you are trying to get something and then you get it and then you have it for a while, it becomes regular. It's normal. Mm -hmm. It's what you see day in and day out. And the excitement fades. Excitement can fade. So I don't know that it's just men who do it. I think women probably do it too. Um, or I know for a fact, I know women do it too. Mm -hmm. So I can't sit here and say only men do that, let alone only black men. But I think that's kind of like just think, a human. I think that's a human thing. I feel like men, from my perspective, men do it more often. So if, and if you want to go down, down the path of down the insight and the teachings of Dr. Umar Johnson, um, alpha males are not meant to just be with one woman. If you look as he framed it at the animal kingdom, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what Dr. Umar taught me. I'm trying to not say. <laughs> what was, what's your beef for Dr. Umar? I don't have a beef for them because some of the stuff he says is legit. It, 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 it's it's mildly insightful. Mildly, mildly. Doc, that is, um, and then some of the stuff he says is is extreme. Like he said something that was circulating today, talking about you know if a black woman wants a man that's an alpha male, she should go to Africa and get an alpha male from there. And he might not require her to work, but she's going to have to respect him because they demand respect. And I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, sir, please, because number one, don't disrespect Dr. Umar <laughs> on this platform. Don't act like you, you are <laughs> a, a hotep. Okay. Have you seen my my Twitter profile? <laughs> yes, I have. And I, I need you to change it. I've meant to, and I just never did. It's been like a year. It has been. Yeah, so it'll be a year in February. It's this. First of all, this misconception of African men being like super alpha male, and that African women are docile. And no, that's freaking ridiculous. Every family unit I have been a part of, I have witnessed. It is the women who are the dominant ones in the family. It is the matriarch that holds the family down. It, and a lot of cultures like to give this perception that women are just so, you know, submissive and docile and maybe that it's American women that we talk and, and we talk back and all of that. No. I used to hear my grandma sl snap back, um, my paternal grandma, like not re disrespectfully, but she was the one who was talking. My grandfather was very much so, he was quiet he was reserved like he didn't he was a man of few words um when he did speak you know he commanded the attention because people were like oh he's saying something right. but it was my it's my grandmother who my only living grandparent now who she was a talker to the point where I, i've heard my dad like 
he would even be like, like, why, why is she saying so much? That, like, that, that, like. Is she an exception or is she the rule? No, the Ghanaian women, like Ghanaian women, are not docile, submissive women. No, in more countries in in Africa than Ghana, huh? Maybe he wouldn't refer to Ghana. But I, I'm basing I'm just, this. I'm, not, I'm, I'm basing not, this I'm, off of I'm my not, number one. I'm not being serious okay. right now. I'm not. I'm just. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm basing this off of right. my scope, my exposure. The sure. Nigerian women I've been exposed to have always been very dominant. They're still feminine, but they're very dominant leader. Like Ghana is, if I'm not mistaken, it was two years ago. Ghana had the most female-owned businesses in the world. So shout out to Ghana. Shout out to Ghana. So these are this misconception that are African, they profitable? Th- they pay their bills. <laughs> um, this misconception that's, that's that, not that's not the this question. Misconception that you know African men are you know they're dominant and they're present. Blah blah. blah. That is. Hey, look, man, don't get is f- don't get don't, don't get us into the the algorithm and then male. No, Africa come. Well, they can come for me because I've no, seen can't. I've seen some African men who is just like, dude, do something. Like say like be a man. I will say from my perspective, when it comes to comparison to other races, I find per my definition of masculinity, black men are more masculine. I appreciate that. Um, black men command more. I appreciate that. I'm glad you do. Black men have a more commanding presence. You know why? Because you married to one. For now. Um, For now. They have a more commanding presence. Uh, again, this is my scope. So I don't need, you know, the white brothers and the Asian brothers and the spicy Latino brothers coming for me. Um, this Sp- is, I, still, I still can't believe you said that. This is, this is my perspective. So if that's the, if that's the angle he's coming from, which I doubt he is, I can respect that because, and I've had this conversation with, with friends in the past where it's because black men need to command a room. Black men need to, because of his story, history, black men are black people. We have to hold ourselves differently. So, you right. know, when a black man walks into a room, he, he needs to take ownership of it. True. Um, so that I have, that's the respect and appreciation I have for a black man that I don't see in other races. Like, you know, white guy walks into a room. It's like, white guy walked into a room, black man walks into a room. I'm probably like, okay, like look his, for the most part, his stature, his the the way he he enters is is engaging without using words. If that's what Umar means, okay. But this concept of you know you're gonna be a, a, a stay at home wife and raise children and you're not gonna talk back and you're not gonna be opinionated. That's BS. And I I need this mis I need this misconception to stop. One well because- uh, well, well one one thing I think we should. Just to be fair, Umar frequents Africa a lot. Now, compared to somebody who whose roots are there, although we all got roots there, no, um, minor, I, I, um, they're above ground. Um, I'm still connected to the vine. I'm just saying, somebody who's only been there like twice doesn't matter. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. He been there. He frequents there. You only been there twice, so he may have a greater his finger. He may have a, a his finger may be on the pulse of what he's talking about. He may it's have not. a he may be closer to it than you because no, you're from is, afar. You cross the water. How the do you know? Because I've spent my life around Ghanaian and African a, men. Hand, a handful of them. No, a decent Worcester when I was growing up. Worcester. Had, oh, had, oh, had not like, that, not that New England coming had the, out. Had the Worcester largest, had the largest population of Ghanaians okay. in Worcester. America, and and I grew like and I grew up seeing Ghanaian men as very dominant but very quiet, and it was their wives who did the talking, who did you know the negotiation. Like that's how my mom was with my dad. So I just don't want. No, that's how we are. It is. I just yeah. don't want black women assuming that if they're going to Talking Ghana, they're getting these dominant men who are going to no, because some and and some men need a woman who's going to lead. Like leadership is different. I think we have a misconception of what leadership is, and so his statement is it can be confusing. Like, I didn't. I haven't heard this, so I, I can't. Okay, speak to I'll it. have to find it and share but, it with you. But finish your thought. 
so i just don't want women to one if they're desiring to go and get an african man i don't want them to be deterred because they think this is the type of man they're going to get but that i also don't want them thinking this is also the type of man i'm going to get to. Sure. so it's it's twofold yeah. but you know African men are great. Not my personal preference. I didn't marry an African man. I always knew I was never going to marry an African man because I didn't like African men. Um, And I didn't like, so that was not what I wanted. You know, African men can be very prideful. Mm. You know, they have, they are right Mm. and they cannot be questioned and Mm. they cannot be made to look a fool. Mm. You can't, you, you can't put certain types of African men, you can't put them in situations where they seem, where you're making them seem like they're stupid or they're Mm. foolish or they don't understand. I didn't Mm. want to always have to be mindful of what I say or how I say it. Mm. So I, I, that's just not me. Not saying that there couldn't, wouldn't have been an African man out there who could have aligned with me, but from the, we could, from what I was exposed to, that's just not what I wanted respect um we got off on a tangent but to circle back into to button i think we can agree Derek jackson's trash yes but i don't understand yeah. like what he does um apparently he cheats i knew that yeah but like in terms of why I'm not, you know i'm gonna take it back I, I, no i don't know that he's i don't know that it's fair to say these trashes i don't know him so not mm, really, not really fair he gives off trash vibes but um just looking at him you can look at someone and be yeah, like, just but if you if that's what you want to do, man, just do it. But don't don't be holding people up. But he's still giving relationship <laughs> advice. That's what he does. That's well, his claim to fame. What kind of relationship advice does he give? He might be. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't subscribe. So this makes me wonder: Do you have to be in a successful relationship to give good relationship advice? I feel like that's a topic for another conversation because we got to wrap. No, we got to wrap because you made plans. No, we got to wrap because we're at an hour and 46 minutes. Okay, we've done two I'm already hours. I'm already 30 minutes past the time that I was supposed to stop. Okay. An hour, an hour, actually. First so time. Watch your tone. So don't, no. Look, this what is you, not, you are not Umar. This is not Africa. I will out talk you. What you will not do. I will do it. Sit here and, and try to disrespect, disrespectful. Um, I'm not going to do nothing but my disrespect. Not on camera, no. Frankly, I think you appreciate a disrespectful woman. No, I don't. Anyway. Um, because so my, since- my, my mother was not disrespectful. Um, but to uh, to wrap up. You see me still disrespectful? <laughs> to wrap up. <laughs> um, and in two months when she watches Raphael, this episode. Raphael Warnick. Georgia, she, she, she caught up. She commented on the one from last week. Really? Because she, she probably was, just skipped all the other ones. <laughs> Georgia, um, you came through. Raphael Warnick won. Georgia, you can um, But conservatives and but before you continue, the fact that 1.2 million Georgians voted for the football player from Georgia, y'all need to be concerned with yourself. I am. It's beyond me. So that, there's there's um, conservatives uh, are kind of in shambles around this as they should be. The so there was a uh, masquerading <laughs> fools because um we know kind of toward the end of the campaign, Christian Walker, Herschel's son, Spilled came out. and all the tea. It was like the Boston Tea Party all over again. But it was so funny because one, of, he's he's uh, very uh, outspoken. And, yep. And um, one of his viral clips is, I guess he was, I, I've never actually seen the entire video, but I've oh, only goes, seen the clip where he was going in on black men or, you know, would be uh, black men, Democratic voters, uh, where he was basically saying, there's no fathers in the home, <laughs> which is actually his reality. His father wasn't in the home. So I saw somebody put on Twitter. He was like, oh, this must be where the whole father's in the home. <laughs> fathers, father your children. He's like, I guess that's where it came from because Pop, Papa Herschel wasn't around. He wasn't. So, uh, so I think Christian was projecting a little bit. But yeah. He definitely has some hurt and I feel for him. You know, and, and, and in all seriousness, right? Um, that's I, I I can't imagine as a son uh, what that would be like to know and to for your dad to be Herschel Walker, mm-hmm. who in his in his prime a significant at his at his height was from is a Georgia. I mean, he's still a Georgia legend. Is he? Yeah, the University of Georgia. <sighs> he's high as a winner. I think. I mean, I, does he still hold that after <clears throat> making a fool? Like, did he get a degree? 
because that we need to check their accreditation. <laughs> well, like the dude said in the, in the clip, he said Herschel Walker played football when the helmets was soft. <laughs> He was like, I'm not listening to this cat, man. <laughs> oh, that's from the 85 South Show. Anyways, um, no, nah, but I I can't imagine what it would be like. Like my dad not around, and my dad but is around, my dad is freaking freaking Herschel Walker, and he mm-hmm. out there running around. So I I can understand that hurt. No, I can't understand it, but I can empathize. I can only imagine yeah. can only imagine what that hurt is like. Um, but yeah, Warnock one. Yes. So and then your girl bounced and became independent so it's still 50 50 cinema i can't i can't her and mansion i'm like done with them um Um, no we can't i'm real quick no i'm gonna make this so quick apparently i'm sure you've seen it Lori Harvey. It's an hour and Are you minutes. privy to? No, that's why I said no because I haven't talked about. Okay, so Lori Harvey know about allegedly it. makes any man she goes on a date with date relationship what sign an NDA with a clause of a million dollars. So if they break it, they she can yes, sue for a million. A million dollars. Okay. And one that says the first thing, the fact that she's only dating dudes who can afford to lose a million dollars, but two. Allegedly, she and Damson Idris are a thing. And he's allegedly signed this NDA. And this is, this is, people are kind of like going off on the fact that they, they try to shame her, obviously, um, because she is a successful black woman. But what really got me is I still don't understand her significance to society. And on one of these posts on Instagram, it said professional socialite. I didn't know that that was a thing. You can make. This is America. You can be whatever Everything you want to be. Everything is a professional because you can be whatever you want to be. She just. I. I just started hearing. I heard her name recently, probably the last two years, and realized like, oh, this is Steve Harvey's daughter. But you know, I've never seen her in a movie, in a music video. She hasn't dropped an album. So I was kind of like, why is she, what is her claim to fame besides the fact that she is Steve Harvey's daughter? She's a professional socialite who has an NDA of a million dollars just to go on a date with her and sounds, i think it's brilliant it sounds smart I'm, yes. I'm all for it absolutely 100 percent. i appreciate you engaging i'm just saying like i mean if you're going if you're trying to come up as a good way to do it you get get you a dude who can afford to lose a milli and if he decides to lose a milli you get a milli yes i mean you get like probably like five hundred thousand after lawyer but fees it, that's whatever. brilliant but, and i don't <clears> understand why I'm, more celebrities don't do something like that because maybe, maybe maybe they do we just don't hear about it or maybe they'll start they it's definitely should be a trend and then last but not least you said it the tiktok nurses i didn't get to watch it you didn't watch it i didn't get to watch it so i don't i don't have the context okay i mean they they said some very I, but i want to i want to wait until i have context before we talk about it's it it's not going to be trending by the time you watch it and okay. we talk about it then we'll we'll do a live you want to do a live Let's do a live. Do we still do lives? We can do a live. Okay. Um, All right, folks. That's not everything. So yeah. But it's what we got. Fathers in the, <laughs> fathers in the home. <laughs> uh, Warn up one. So uh, we were um, on pins and needles. Jessica stayed awake long enough to I see told the results. To to bed, like, and I, I fell times. asleep, and so I woke up. Warnick was giving his acceptance or his, had, his victory speech. I saw the win. I got up. I went to bed. I left him on the couch. I was like, damn, wasn't Jessica down here? So I got to go to bed. So uh, we're winding down season two. Uh, we've probably only got like three episodes left. We got one guest left to come on. Uh, we just locked them down uh, here today, actually. So uh, that'll be coming soon. And then we are actually going to be taking a break here at Rush Vibes. So it's a, like it's, a, reset. a it's a shorter season than our first season, which was 40 freaking up, 49 freaking episodes. Uh, but we're going to take a break and uh, be back probably sometime in February. Haven't exactly decided the date yet but uh probably only two two, probably two more episodes after this one so um appreciate all the love all the uh all the uh support following the reviews the comments the engagement all of that we're looking to uh to grow the vibe tribe here in 2023 and uh of course that includes everybody who's been here for the ride so far so uh continue to uh like us on facebook share on facebook uh, if you haven't already, follow us there. We're on Instagram. 
Um, obviously here on YouTube, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you get notified for when we do come back and also for the for the last two episodes. And we're also on Apple, Spotify, Google, tune in, all that good stuff. And um We got an elf on our sign. Popster. Popster. That's not everything, but it's some of the things, so <laughs> And we'll be we'll we'll be back next week. So We'll catch y'all then. Be safe, be well. Stay warm. Yeah. It's getting cold out here. None but some grub Yeah. Father's in the hey. home. Hey. I done came way too far. Can stop me now. <laughs> I done came way too far. Can stop me now. <laughs> I done came way too far. Can stop me now. <laughs> I done came way too far. Can stop me now. Stop me now. Can stop me now. Yeah.